and um, inadequate criticism didn't in the in the previous Hull game, for example, we didn't create enough chances late on. Uh, obviously, more attacking options in this. Obviously, without various in back, we have Mikey Johnson, Callum Robinson back. Although he's not played much at, that much at club level, they are available again. Um, and they, they weren't a, none of those players were available in the, in the last camp. Uh, Civic has in particular caused problems for us over there. Uh, is, is there a way to counter that again tactically, or are you happy with the shape? Well, obviously, I'm not going to discuss how we're going to play. You know, it, it wouldn't make sense for to do that. To discuss how we're going to play today in the, in the press conference, and I think uh, he's one player. Listen, Greek are a good team, a very experienced team, a lot of good players in terms of uh, a lot of experience. Well, players in the late twenties, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of games under their belt. They're a consistent team. They don't change, not much change in the lineup very, very often. Um, and our streetwise team, you know, we've seen that with the sending off of Matt Doherty, and which was never sending off, of course, that was, a, you know, in terms of uh, players drop, put themselves on the ground, throwing themselves on the ground to get, to get them sent off. We see players lying down in the game, six or seven players to take minutes out of the game. We've seen that in, in the game of Greece, so that was, that was um, something that was very prevalent in the game. And, uh, so they're a very streetwise, very experienced um, team, and um, we have to we have to know our face. Um, can I just ask? I wasn't here, but I heard Keith Andrews almost suggesting that there was insider information from uh, <coughs> from Gus Poyet that he had used contacts. I mean, what do you make of that? Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. I don't have any comments to make on that. I'm ready, please. Thanks, Ian. So, um, that game in Athens, how much have you kind of spoken about this week and used it as motivation? Or have you kind of forgotten about it? Or is there kind of a, is it being used to motivate the fact that we kind of push, show better account for ourselves? No, I think uh, you have to look, you know, you have to obviously review it, review all our games. And review what we can do better than all of our games. You know, we constantly do that. And I think uh, we have to look forward. Obviously, different players, some players are in a different place, some players middle of the season now, uh, they found a win in the games, and um, what, are players, what are players available now, like Chidozio Benya for example, coming in after playing three Premier League games recently, he's never place than he was even last month when he hadn't played really any minutes, he played a few few minutes for Luton, but coming in and on the back of three, three um, 90 minute games for Luton, he looks in very good form, and um, so I think uh, we review all our games. You know, you know. I think uh, the atmosphere at the home games has been really electric, and at, at the games, people, you know, realise it's a it's a special occasion for them playing in, in, at home. And uh, we want to finish the group strongly. We're still in contention automatic or, uh, for automatic qualification. Um, mathematically, we. we not in their own hands, of course, we're relying on uh, results elsewhere. You know, we've got to see if we, we're still, we can take it to the November window. The only way we can do that is by taking six points of this window. Um, it may not be enough, but we ha we'd be kicking ourselves if we didn't do that and, uh, and, and, and results did happen elsewhere. So we need to we need to make sure that we do our side of, uh, you know, that we win the games that we need to win, and that starts with Greece on Friday, which will be a real tough game. Greece are a good team; they have they they would see themselves have a better a better chance of qualification automatically, and um, so we've got to make sure that we're absolutely ready and ready to go against them. And it should be it should be a really good game, and the players are um, you know getting ready and, and get and looking forward to the game. With all the talk about and um, I suppose with the inside of knowledge into our camp in Greece. Do you surprise us this Yeah, Tio Zakarakis in the hotel in Casablanca. <laughs> but I think um, he's, he's, he's coming down and we'll, we'll see how he is. Now, I think, obviously, I'm not going to discuss it in re regarding the, um, the, you know, how we're going to play and so far. I'm going to do that. Greece are consistent how they play. They how they play 4 2 3 or 4 2 3 1. And um, they want to, from their point of view, 
we want a we want a, a big home win, and that's what we want. We want a big home win. We want uh, to reward the supporters, the Irish support with a, with a big home win at home, and um, you know I think uh, the players will be very determined to do that. You know, very determined to do that. Nathan, please. Uh, kids comes to obviously raise your eyebrows and make plenty of headlines. Did. You was there a sense around that Greece game that they might have had some insider knowledge that people that have been around your camp were in with them and that maybe they were aware of what your game plan was going to be before the game started? You know, it's all quite possible. You know, it's all quite possible, but I'm just saying, um, not, not only that was around their camp, but I think, uh, listen, I'm not getting hung up on that. And I think uh, certainly we're just focus on preparing the team for, for the game on Friday. Uh, Shane, you're the uh, the elder statesman of this uh, squad now, the oldest player in the group. No Coleman, yeah. no McLean, no Hendrick, a lot of those guys in 2016 are gone. Does it feel like a very, very different camp now? Um, yeah, it is. Obviously, I think me and Matt are the two oldest, and I think it's the first time for me to be the oldest so on. Um, yeah. It's actually, it's very enjoyable, just trying to keep up with the young ones. And, uh, yeah, I've got a new, obviously a new role sort of to take on and try and lead, lead by example around the place and I try and do it anyway when Seamus and that's here, so um, we were missing John as well, so it's, um, we're missing a few big characters of course, but um, the younger boys are, they've got their own characters in their own way and uh, I don't even look at them as young, young boys no more, they're, they're quite experienced around the place and um, it's actually very, uh, it's, a, it's enjoyable for them so far, but we've really enjoyed the week and um, just looking forward to it again. Amy's please. Stephen, do you almost have to treat these three games as a, a mini campaign? Uh, listen, just every international game is significant, they're all important. I think the players want, we want to win, win our home games, we want to win, win the game against Greece, it's, it's going to be a real uh, epic battle. Greece have been consistent over the last couple of seasons, and we've got to we've got to produce a big performance to win. We can look at Gibraltar after that, and then take it into the next window. I think uh, at the moment we're, we're just fairly focused on Friday, and um, because there's a big challenge for us on Friday, one that we must rise to. And um, I know some players, the players are are pretty determined to put in a, a strong performance and, and get that victory that we need. And hey, hi Stephen. Given the very different position of the group now compared to even before the Holland game, do you worry that the players won't be able to match that same level of intensity? Uh, you know, I understand the question. You know, it's, it, it is fair, but you no, know, I think the majority, the vast majority of players are. Yeah, of course, it's you, John, just to put on the green shirt. You, John, to put on the green shirt and uh, to represent your country, and, and especially in the qualifier. Um, and the reality is. Although it's, a, it's an outside chance, mathematically we still have a chance. So as long as that's the case, we must give everything of ourselves all the time. Everything, every player must give everything. That's not a question. And I think that they, they, they will be usually motivated the players um, to try and, and, and uh, fulfill their potential in this game. Finally, after the line. Stephen, um, I've already said during the week, we get coached brilliantly. Uh, a preparation off the pitch in terms of the opposition, the way they set us up is the right way and we know the game plan is, is the right game plan. So just on reflection and when we look at some of the results, is there something missing during, during the actual games that, that's just been missed you know, just a little bit, you know, in terms of changing our tactics, quick, quick to react within, you know, from the side of it. Have you reflected on that? It's yeah, we, we reflect on every game. I think you can say, oh, well, hang on, you've been critical. If you, if you make a change at half time, well, then tactically you must have got it wrong to start. But then if you don't make one, well, then you're not changing it. So tactically, you're not, you're not changing it. So I think the reality is, um, you know, sometimes, depending on the selection of your team, you'd like a team that could flow in and out of uh, systems easily. That but sometimes the personnel in the, in, in the team that you've selected. That isn't the case, you know. You know, it's it's different. You know, for example, if you change Coleman in the back three, you can slide the back four easily. And, the, and these things, just just one example. But I think I think uh, it doesn't suit everyone. But 
I would say that we've, we've uh, overall we look like the potential to score goals over the period that we just again in the previous game against Holland we started like a house on fire we started well passed the ball well we're aggressive in our press um, and then we conceded after 20 minutes that in our first attack we conceded so <coughs> we, that's that's been our Achilles heel that we just have conceded that critical times when we, we needed to see out and that, that, that has worked us there is no doubt about that um, 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 but all the games we've had this year have been tough games you know alright Gibraltar at home we did a professional job but certainly uh, they've been tough games and we, this is a tough game we've got to rise up we've got to, we've got to, we've got to try and win it we've got to win, it, win a tough game here on Friday night you know we'll win a tough game on Friday night that ends the live section and so everyone can just went on and embargo to the level again so that's the embargo. We're going to start the embargo section with Hi, Stephen. Um, Stephen, you've spoken before about how Brighton have a very unique, unique style of play. Um, just as regards Evan, he played in June. He's in a short time in Ireland. He's played with a couple of different partners. Are you, are you still trying to find the best way to sort of accommodate Evan in your side and to help it out to find the, the right partner for him and the right system to suit him? Oh, I think, listen. <coughs> Ever will play play a lot of systems in his career, and he's, he's done so well. You forget he's just 18, and um, he's had a like no no artist player in, in in a long time has had such an impact so early in their career, and uh, it's a credit to him. He's really been uh, you know really been excellent. Um, so no, I think I think the team performance overall against Greece the way. Wasn't what we wanted it to be, so we didn't provide the ammunition that he needed for that game for him. Uh, but certainly, in his infancy, he's already got two goals in his short career. He'll get off the mark quickly, um, and he's not, you know, it's, it's, he's only it's his first season, and he's only come into the team, and he obviously, was a, you know, injury prevented him being available in the last camp. So we're delighted to have him back in. Um, he played on Sunday. So we needed to recover Monday and Tuesday after playing on Sunday. So we trained yesterday and we trained today and we're ready for tomorrow. And uh, we're excited to have him uh, and to utilise him. And <coughs> he's, there's no doubt over a long period for Ireland he's going to be, uh, if he can you know, get a bit of luck, he's going to certainly be a very important player. And uh, hopefully he can, we can, he can, uh, Enjoy this experience on Friday and, and, and uh, do well. Okay. Stephen, just on Alan Brown, um, the last window we played wing back, obviously Matt was in, James, or James was in, we played midfield against Holland. Is, firstly, how is he after the illness he just had? And secondly, is this a type of game, given how aggressive Greece are in midfield, that suits him? Yeah, I think even Alan, last season for Preston, it was a very interrupted season for him. He has had calf issues and a couple of other issues and he wasn't really available for the summer camp. He came with us uh, but couldn't train in the first week and it was a late addition to training because of because of injury. And uh, he did he did have he did come on against Gibraltar, you know, in that game, but he wasn't fully fit for the games in in Greece in, in the summer window. Uh, this season he started like a house on fire, got himself in brilliant condition for Preston. Started really well uh, for Preston, had a very, very good season, uh, season to date. Um, Preston were obviously <coughs> at the top end of the championship. And he's the captain and he's been very influential for Preston. Um, and yeah, he had the illness obviously last week that um, when he came into camp on Monday, Came in on Monday. We had to isolate him. You know, we couldn't couldn't come to the meetings. We didn't. You know, we couldn't come to the meetings. Or we had to we had to sort of go go just be isolated in his room for a day, an extra day, just to just to make sure uh, to get that extra the 72 hours after the the, the doctor under the doctor's instruction. So he trained trained yesterday, and he's fully fit. And yeah, we see him as uh, a strong option in the central midfield. In the central midfield area, in those attacking areas of midfield, we feel he's a goal threat, and 
he brings uh, other qualities as well. And just, he wasn't COVID, no? No. Okay. Shane, um, Josie, uh, we're with Brighton for us now yeah. with Evan. Just from the training pitch, like, what threats does he possess in terms of from a defensive point of view and just a little on his, on his potential as well? Yeah, oh, listen, he's first and foremost, he's he's a great he's a great boy, he's got a really good head on his shoulders, he's he's humble first and foremost, he never gets ahead of himself. He came in at Brighton when he was sixteen and he was he was like a man already, that he didn't he stood out unbelievably well and he's got a, he's got a lot of like potential of course he's I, I would just always say that like, just be careful like for how much you would put on him because he is 18 there's a lot of pressure on him already and he will he will produce and um, for me I think he's got everything to be a top striker in, in the Premier League and in Europe and but he just needs to keep going the whole the way he is going nothing, nothing sort of to get too ahead of himself I think he's got he's good with that so um for me, he's got a thing. He's got a he's, he's strong boys, top finisher. He, he's willing to work for the team. And he's willing to learn. And for an 18 year old, with so much pressure on him already, I think it's, it's a <coughs> good, good habit to help him. As I said, man, as you said there, we're all really excited for the future for him. He's hopefully with a, with a bit of luck. He's, he's our talisman for, for years to come and, and gets the goals we all want. So, um, He's a really good boy and um, a really bright future. You mentioned keeping up with the younger players. What's the difference between the younger players now and your generation? I don't know. I think there's just there's more of them at the minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, all good boys, all good. That's, it's one thing I always look for is like how they are in the place, how, you, how their attitude is, and, and I think they're all top, and, and that's one one thing you always look for in a young player coming through, especially at this level and I think we've got a really good group and we want to do well for the country, all really proud and we want to succeed for the country and, and that's what I look at and obviously they've got really a lot of ability as well so that obviously helps but um, as long as they're grounded and always want to do the hard work and, and perform and perform at the top level for Ireland and, I always say we've got a really exciting future and for the next 10 years I think the majority of the squad is going to be here for the next 10 years so one man and one role except for What I have is? Uh, Shane, uh, Steve mentioned the, the Achilles heel maybe of conceding goals at difficult times yeah. maybe long range goals or after break um, I know you're out of the team or out of the squad for a wee while but how frustrating has that been for the players in terms of the goals that, that, that have been up in those scenarios and how do you combat that? Yeah, it's something obviously we're looking at, I think, as, as a defender, obviously we want to keep clean sheets and on the admin, so um, it's disappointing the balls, I feel like we could, we could have done we could have done something about the balls and, and that's one of the else's players, we, we, need to, we need to perform better and defensive actions and close shots down more. And, I feel like we've been a little bit unlucky with the, some of the long range goals, of course, but um, we're working hard, obviously, to get that clean sheet gives, gives us a platform to go on and win games. And I think when the manager first came out, we were keeping a lot of clean sheets and, and not conceding many goals, so we need to get back to that. Because we've got goals in the team, I think. We've got, we score goals, we, we create a lot of chances, so it's going to be us to keep clean sheets, and, and that gives us a a much bigger chance of course to go and win games and but yeah um, disappointing we haven't got we haven't kept Lynchy for a while so um hopefully we can do that fight. Shane just first of all on, on Norwich oh, sorry on, on Greece and I didn't play in Athens yeah. but you have an inside having a having a team club mate just your, your thoughts on him on Greece the fact they don't have stars apart from St. Cass but how good you you rate them for what they're like Yeah well obviously I've spoke to him um I know how, how big a game it is for them because they've been talking about it quite a lot and um, I think if they, they want to beat us they have a chance of going to Holland and, and 
winning, so they they know it's a massive game for them in the country. And, but we know that as well, so we know we we need to go and get the win. So um, yeah, they're a good team. He says they're a good team at the minute. They've got um, the way they're playing, and they're, they're really confident actually. So it's up to us to go and, and put put our game plan on it and and sort of. <coughs> over the month for, for the summer really and um, I'm really looking forward to, to the game, the atmosphere on Friday night and, and, and getting on. And second, Stephen mentioned intensity, but even it's from some previous games and once from this game, Matt the other day spoke about his red card and <coughs> though he feels he, he also won, you, you, you kind of touched on it there as well, um, play acting, is, is this kind of game maybe where with that intensity a lot of that where it calls for something else like the old nights in Lansdowne but maybe it's Park a lot of stuff that maybe you like to do and it's, it's going to be a, a battle because of the history and also the, the intensity that Steve mentioned. Well we want to, we want to win every game of course but um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that. I would say we have our style of play and we have the way we want to play. We want to start like we did against Holland on the front floor, get after them, get the stadium up and and that's the way I feel like that's when we play at our best is when we're like that. And, on top of teams and winning the ball back high up and going after them and I think that's what we have to do Friday early on and make it a really competitive game and then play our, play our football when we can but we know it's going to be an intense game as I said they, it's a big game for them as well they know that and so they're going to come and, and want to win so we've got to prepare for that and be ready for it and hopefully we can um, as I said start like we did against Holland and go on and make it a really Intense game and a good battle, and hopefully, from the top. Uh, two questions there. One for Shane, if I may. Shane, I think you're the only survivor of the, the 2016 match against, um, against France and Leon. Um, you missed out on your 2020 work, but hanging in 2024, mathematically, as Stephen says, still a chance. Uh, good news this week about Euro 28 coming uh, to, to, the, to these islands, to this island. Uh, 36 then. Do you yourself people know? Is that a motivation? I'm trying to swipe it Friday, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, God, I don't know what that far ahead of me is. I don't even know where it was last year. I'm just yeah. proud to be back in the hall now and I'm happy and just trying to keep my body as best as I can. So, You've you got the second chance then, haven't you? With our, you know, you come back in again. You've got all the same chances, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, listen, I'll never, I'll never give up. Like it's 36, geez, I'm 31. Like, but I don't know where I'm going to be. So I know we've got a bright future for 2028. That's really exciting. I would never outstay my stay. I'm not performing at a level. I don't know what I said. Like, so I don't know where I'm going to be next year. Never mind 2028. 20, so um, yeah, I'll be the kid man or something. No, it's yeah. really excited, so amazing. I wish, I wish I was involved. I wish I, I hope I am in some some way, but it's a long way away. But for the lads coming through, it's what a something really exciting to look forward to. It's an amazing thing to have the Euros in Dublin. It's the pinnacle of the careers and something yeah. amazing. So hopefully, all goes well with her and obviously. Just wait, we know what to do. So, you, um, the Dutch game, two goals came down between the, the left of three and the left wing back. And look at you, you have four different left wing backs in the five qualifiers. Um, obviously, James McLean is not playing. You use Adele, you use Doherty, and um, you use Stevens. What are your options there for more Do you see Scales as a left wing back or left of three, or is Manning favourite for that position? <coughs> yeah, well, <coughs> it's, um, it's competitive. Competitive early, Liam has played uh, left wing back for a couple of seasons at Shamrock Rovers and played left back <coughs> for Celtic in under Ange Postecoglou in, in, in a few games in the European competition. Uh, he's playing centre back now, performing really to a high level. Uh, Ryan um, has got his move to Southampton and uh, on the back of doing very well at Swansea. And um, so <coughs> they've had some good form. Beasley, right? Played very well last week uh, for Southampton. So 
it's that level of competition is what we need, and we have, we have to wait and see on, on the day. So those are our two options for that position. We always have the opposition or possibility for some of that switching over, <coughs> um, but it can be very effective. As a, as a right, you know, as a right, and from the right side, the attacks quite well. So um, you would lose that. So, but I think it's obviously uh, something that we have to. Uh, to make that decision. Thank you very much, guys. Train the starts in half an hour. Thank you. Thank you.